to cover or not to cover this week as many folks are figuring out the winterization process for their RV. They're deciding whether or not they're going to get a cover to put over their RV. I have just recently jumped into the always cover your RV camp. We're going to tell you why and we got a whole lot more fun stuff on this week's episode of the RV Miles podcast. RV Miles is brought to you by L.L. Bean, your source for warm, cozy styles this fall. For 108 years, L.L. Bean has staked their reputation on making comfortable clothing and gear to help you enjoy the healthy benefits of being outside. From legendary main-made boots to layers that are just the right weight to flannel shirts that out-cozy all others. Find joy in the tried and true. Visit LLBean.com to find a store or shop now. L.L. Bean, be an outsider. Hi everybody and welcome to episode 168 of the RV Miles Podcast. I'm Jason. And I'm Abby. And we are two full-time travelers who, along with our boys, Jack, Ethan, and Henry, are crisscrossing North America on one epic road trip. Each week we talk all things RV and outdoors, from travel destinations to gear, industry news, our national parks, and a whole lot more. We are coming to you from an undisclosed piece of public land near Tulsa, Oklahoma. That's even uh, too much information. We can't talk about it because we don't want to get fined for filming for YouTube on public land. Can I get but... you some more bitter tea? <laughs> Goodness. No, we're actually really... You're so bitter. <laughs> we're, we're so excited to be able to be recording this episode outside because the weather is beautiful. The Gorgeous. wind is not moving in the slightest. We're standing by some... We're standing by a lake that is entirely still. Fish are jumping. It's gorgeous out right now. And it has been absolutely miserable for the last several days prior to this. So it's really awesome to be able to be outdoors in the sunshine. It is really, really nice because we have had freezing temps, leaks in the RV, issues with humidity, all of that we're going to get to in a minute. But boy, it is so nice to see the sun. You forget, we have had months and months and months being in the west of sunshine. I forgot what it was like to come back into seasonal environments where clouds roll in and then clouds just sit down and they don't go away. For days. Days. <laughs> we, we were outside for so long yesterday. It was all of a sudden, it's like it's just dark and cloudy. And then I looked at you and I said, does it seem to be getting lighter outside? And then just within minutes, it just had left. After five days, it just went away and there was sunshine. It was glorious. Unfortunately for me, a big portion of that day was repairing a leak we found mm. in our slide, a leak we only found once it started raining hard. And of course, you can't really repair a leak while it's raining. You kind of have to wait till it stops and you can dry things up and you can patch it up. So that, that was, was fun. A lot of managing that <laughs> leak. And I'm not sure yet if it was one leak, two leaks, or three leaks brought on by one central leaking location, or if it was the slide, the corner of the slide, if it was two spots in the window. But once again, we are having leak issues with our slide. I think I figured out why it's happening. Oh, did you? I did. The trim on the outside edge of our slide is screwed down. Right, and then it's covered with, with tape, with like you know a heavy waterproof tape. Well, the screw heads were starting to peek through that tape a bit. At the same time, we're like perfectly level, which is rare, but we're perfectly 100% level. And I think the rain uh, is coming over the edge of our gutter a little bit because we're so level and pooling on the top of our slide. And then it moves over to the spot where all these screws are and it's seeping down in through them. So what I've done is gone and taken a Turnabond tape, which is fantastic stuff, a Turnabond. RV manufacturers use it all the time. It's great stuff. And I've gone and, and put a wider piece of that tape over the top of the other tape to cover it completely and to go up 
the side of the flashing on the side because it didn't do that. So the water could pool on the edge and I could press on that old tape and squirt water out of it. So now I've made, you know, I've made a flashing so it goes down and out. So if the water will come to that edge, it cannot permeate it. And then I've also gone and taken silicone and sealed around our window because we're not sure if our window was leaking as well. I feel pretty certain that that's a completely separate leak. It was very, very specific in the way that it was coming out and in relationship to the area that we thought we were having issues with in the slide. The two just don't make sense to me. Now, obviously I can't see inside the slide. I can't see exactly how the water was moving, but this leak, it was coming from a bolt and it just seemed like, again, a perfect spot that if we were going to have a leak in the window, that's where we would have it. And what was so frustrating about that leak was how quickly it was moving through. This is just to give you an idea. I mean, we had nonstop rain for almost five days. Yeah. And it would it wasn't the ice. Most of Oklahoma got blanketed in a lot of ice. We didn't get blanketed in the ice. We skirted that. We were just a little bit north of that system. So we're getting this really cold rain, these really cold temperatures, but the rain is just not letting up. And I have a hard time picturing how if that water was pooling in the slide, that's translating to moving down and the distance it would need to cover to get to the window without there being other leaks along the way. It's, yeah. it's hard to find out where a leak comes from because they can travel a long distance. All this to say, this is why I said in the opening, uh, I am a convert to covering your RV. And we're going to talk with Colin Phillips from Empire Covers a little bit later in the show. They've been a sponsor with us for a while now. And Colin's going to talk about all the positives and negatives of, of covering your RV. But, you know, imagine... We didn't hit all this rain. Imagine we were on a vacation. You know, we've been traveling around and we've had rain with no leaks. These leaks just appeared. Imagine if we didn't stop here and sit in this rain. Imagine if we put our RV in storage and that leak showed up while it was in storage. Mm. And not only did it continue to dump inside the slide, it would have frozen and thawed and frozen and thawed and done a ton of damage over the course of the winter. I was laying in bed and something was just nagging at me and I didn't like the way this whole leak thing was going down and I just felt like it couldn't have been an isolated incident coming from the window. So I thought, look, I've got to get up and I've got to check under the dinette because we hadn't seen any signs with the carpet that we're stepping on that's part of the dinette. And I got in there and I lifted up some of the storage containers and things we have in there and the carpet in the corners was sopping wet. This is a 2020 model year yeah. RV, folks. So no matter how old your RV is, it, Don't if, be if you have it in storage, go check on it after some severe weather and uh, and make yeah. sure everything's okay. And consider getting a cover. And we'll talk to Colin a little bit later on the, in the show. Yeah. Let's move on, though, to talk a little bit about Starlink. Uh, there's been a major update, and I go into a lot more detail in this on on a different YouTube video. But Starlink satellite internet is on its way. It is now gone to a public beta testing. So people, 700,000 people signed up to hopefully be a part of the beta test and Starlink picked some people in the address areas where they can serve right now. They can only serve the very northern states of the country and Canada right now. So uh, they released an email to a lot of potential customers offering them service. They set the bar very low in this email and they said, look, it's not going to be as fast as we hope it will be eventually. It's going to have outages. Uh, but if you want to test it out, $99 a month for unlimited internet, unlimited fast internet, and then $500 for the setup, which is includes the satellite receiver and a Wi-Fi router for inside, which is pretty good because we actually expected that to be a lot higher. A lot of experts, um, you know, compared to other satellite receivers of this type, were expecting it to be more in the $1,500 to $2,000 range. So if you want to hear more about that, we will link to that video in the show notes and you can find out more about it. RVMiles.com slash 
eight. The other big piece of news that came out this week, and this will be on our latest National Parks podcast in more detail as well, but we wanted to share with you the news here in case you don't listen to that. The Department of the Interior has announced that all veterans, all U.S. military veterans, will now have free access to national parks and other public lands that are managed by the Department of the Interior. That's big. This, that's huge. That's 10% of Americans. This is 20 million people we're talking about. Um, so it's it's a fantastic thing to do for our veterans. I've always thought, you know, that's the least we could do is allow them to have access to public lands for free. Absolutely. Uh, but because the Department of the Interior does not manage national forests, veterans will not be able to get a annual pass, that interagency annual pass that many of us get. A lot of us just call it the National Parks Pass. That is actually a pass that is sort of shared between the U.S. Forest Service and Fish and Wildlife and Bureau of Land Management and the National Park Service. Veterans will not be able to get that pass for free because the National Forest Service is under the Department of Agriculture, and that's a whole different thing. Maybe eventually that's coming to make it easier, hopefully. But for now, veterans can just show any ID, a state ID or a federal ID that shows that they're a veteran will get you in. They're also going to allow Gold Star family members, family members of those who have perished in service, to get into national parks for free. They just have to identify themselves, and they'll be taken uh, on their word for it. Separately, the Department of the Interior also announced that the Every Kid in a Park Outdoors, pro or uh, they're calling it the Every Kid Outdoors pro Program now. It was Every They've Kid changed. in the Park. Now it's <laughs> Every Kid Outdoors. Why? Uh, I don't know. That program normally gives fourth graders a free annual pass, but because so many fourth graders couldn't use it this year because of the pandemic, they're extending it for the next 12 months or so to fifth graders as well. So if you've got a fourth or a fifth grader, they can apply to get a free pass. And all these passes, the, the vet, veterans entrance and this, this Every Kid Outdoors pass, they allow for a whole car load to get into a national park. So uh, you'll be able to and you know, bring your whole family along. Yeah, so if you are interested in that program, we're going to link to it in the show notes so you can go over and sign up your fourth grader or your fifth grader. Just go to rvmiles.com slash 168 and we'll have the link because I know at one point it was, I believe, every kid in a park.com or, or .org, but if they've done a name change. Yeah, I believe it's everykidoutdoors.com, but don't, don't is, or yeah, .gov or don't, something. Don't quote us on that. I mean, you could easily Google it too, and I'm sure it'll come up. But if you just want to grab that link, we'll drop it and make sure it's the correct one, and we'll put it in the show notes. I do want to mention with the, the veterans entrance, veterans will not qualify for discounted tours or camping or anything like that. So if a veteran is living with a disability, they might still want to get the access pass because that's gonna give them half off camping and half off tours and boat fees and all sorts of stuff as well as the senior pass. The senior pass, which is $20 a year or $80 lifetime, you would have to pay for that as a veteran still, but you would get half off camping and those other things. So that's a that can be a big, big saving. So it still might be beneficial for, for a veteran that falls into one of those categories to go ahead and get one of those two passes. Absolutely. All right, let's take a break. And when we come back, we're going to have the answer to last week's brain teaser. And we're going to have our interview with Colin Phillips of EmpireCovers.com. We'll be right back. Fall is here, so it's time to start thinking about preparing for the winter off-season. Whether you own an RV or a travel trailer or a camper, EmpireCovers.com is here to help protect all your vehicles against Mother Nature. EmpireCovers.com offers high-quality, affordable covers that are engineered to protect. Every cover comes with a free multi-year warranty to guarantee it remains durable over time. RV Miles listeners can receive free shipping plus an extra 15% off their entire order. Visit EmpireCovers.com slash RV Miles or use promo code RV Miles at checkout. EmpireCovers.com. Protect what you love. All right, it's time for the answer to last week's brain teaser. On this brain teaser, we asked you to go from the word cool to the word heat by changing one letter at a time. How, how could you do that in the least number of words? And you had to make a, a, a new word each time. How could you do that in the least number of words? And what were the words? So the answer we were looking for took five steps from cool to coal to coat to boat to beat 
to heat. You can't do it any faster than five <laughs> steps because you can only change one letter at a time. Uh, but we did get several other answers that used different words <laughs> Very that, were, colorful. that were able to make it work. So congratulations <laughs> yes. to those, that, those of you that did. We, we will have a new brain teaser <laughs> later on in the show. So as I said earlier, I'm now a convert to covering your RV when it's in storage. There's always been sort of a back and forth on whether a cover can actually damage your RV. And it's true of cheap covers or if you just throw a tarp over your RV and, and you know, cinch it down, you could actually cause damage. But if you get a good, well-fit cover made for RVs, you can really protect a paint job. We've talked to people that have 15-year-old RVs that have paint jobs that look brand new and we ask them why and it's always because either they're it's stored indoors or it's stored under a canopy or they have a cover for it yeah if we ever have to store ranger gandalf traley the second working title for an extended period it's we are covering cover. it after what we just went through and the amount of water that came in over that time i think we would be foolish to leave it uncovered again absolutely so I had the pleasure of talking with Colin Phillips, the Chief Technology Officer from EmpireCovers.com. You just heard their ad. And uh, they make really great products that are, you know, don't take our word for it. And don't take the fact that they pay for an ad on the show for it. They have over 100,000 positive reviews. They're a fantastic company. So here is my interview with Colin Phillips from EmpireCovers.com. Colin, welcome to the podcast. Hey, how are you? I'm doing great. How are you? Doing all right. Let's kick off right here with, um, as people are jumping into figuring out what to do with their RVs for the winter, we got a lot of new RVers out there right now that bought RVs this year and are just learning the winterization process for the first time. And they're just figuring out their storage options right now. How can a company like Empire Covers help somebody keep their RV protected throughout the, the off season? I grew up with, with an RV, several RVs, which I should say, you know, kind of my coming of age was our transition from, uh, you know, tents to a bad experience with tents. So we, we, my mom insisted we went out and got a, you know, pop-up trailer. And then, you know, by the time I was turning 16, my dad was making me drive the RV, you know, or at least tow the RV and hook it all up. Uh, we didn't have a, you know, a, a drivable one, but we had a, uh, you know, a travel trailer. And, you know, one of the experiences, you know, I had for several years was going and, and taking that RV to where we stored it. And it was a storage facility, you know, where people just rented out the, you know, the lockers and, and we kind of parked it, you know, behind there. And it wasn't covered and it kind of spent the winter sitting there. And our version of winterizing it was cleaning it out and uh parking it and uh <laughs> went at the end of the season or i'm sorry at the beginning of the season we would uh come back and we would clean it back out and of course there'd be tons of you know dust mites or whatever else had accumulated over the winter and it was always filthy the, the exterior we'd have to take it home it was a huge process of pressure washing it uh applying different chemicals and and just trying our best to keep it you know ready to take it on the road and this was something we repeated over and over again every season. And it just became actually the, the ultimate reason we didn't keep the RV for the family. And it, you know, it's sad to say, but that's, those are, those were the best memories I had growing up. And this was, this was the, the ultimate reason my dad couldn't let it go. It was just too much work for us to, to be doing every single season. So it's kind of come full circle, you know, a decade later, here I am. And, uh, you know, selling car covers and RV covers and boat covers. And, you know, these types of protection for your things that you've put a lot of investment into or are really important to your family, it's really nice to have some, a way of having it ready to go. You know, you just mm -hmm. throw a cover on, you, you set it up and store it for the winter. And when you come back to it, it's right where you left it. And that's just something that is, you know, a game changer for a lot of people and a lot of families out there. They just don't have the time or maybe the mobility to be getting on top of the RV, cleaning it off with chemicals, or they don't have access to a pressure washer. This, this really can make a difference for many people out there and something they really invested into or they care about, or you know, perhaps they spend a lot of time in, in their RV and they really want it looking good when people come over to visit or they're hosting. You know, there's many different reasons why somebody might want to keep things looking you know, particularly clean and nice. 
And so it's really nice to have, you know, access to something like this. Why should somebody buy a cover that's, you know, fitted for RVs? Uh, first of all, like, you know, tell us how they're fitted to your RV, but why should somebody buy one that they can fit to their RV instead of just covering with a tarp or something like that? Well, I mean, just to be frank, I mean, if you, if you buy a cover that just, you know, much less a tarp, but a cover that just doesn't fit your RV. It's not, it's, there's, there's so many different things. It's a, it's not going to stay on the RV for the duration of the, the season. Um, but even an ill fitting or a poor fitting cover is, has many chances of ripping and wind catching underneath of it and, you know, uh, dirt and snow and other things accumulating underneath of it. And you actually can cause damage to your cover by having, I'm sorry, not much, not just to your cover, but also to your, you know, your, your RV by having an ill-fitting cover like you just just for an example if you were to put like a cover on your your patio furniture and you you put it out for the winter and it wasn't something that really was properly designed to give you an example you know you could have snow or rain underneath of that accumulating and then it'll mold and mildew and all those different things can form and it's really just not a good idea to have something that's you know not not fit or made for what you're trying to cover and that's that's why we offer things that are a variety of sizes uh different fits and different materials that really suit exactly what it is uh, you're trying to cover and in, in the weather you're trying to cover it in are there are there different considerations for people that live in different climates and for different times of the year for like the type of cover they get yeah of course i mean we we, we offer a, a range of different materials uh at, at different price points that really kind of cover uh, the different situations uh, that you that might be important to you, such as you know high UV index covers are are resistant to fade. Uh, what we offer water resistant materials, reinforcements across the different corners. So for people who are you know highly windy areas, I mean we definitely uh, have, have tried these covers in a, a wide variety of of conditions to and you know built built our our modeled our catalog around you know, what our customers might need to, you know, endure for those different seasons. So talk to me about the process of actually covering an RV. So say I've got, you know, what I have is a 35 foot travel trailer. I'm putting that in storage. Um, I have this cover that I bought from Empire Covers. What does it take to get it on my RV? Sure. It takes two to three people and they pull the cover over the roof of the vehicle and then once it's you know draped over the the RV, there's different options for tie downs where we offer you know uh, in our, for example in our car our car covers we have cable locks. I mean different, there's different op opportunities for for uh, cinching the the cover down to the RV to you know prevent those you know windy condition scenarios that I spoke of. And can you is it hard to then access the inside of the RV after you've got a cover on no, it? No, no, no. So we we actually have um zippered panels, easy access panels that are uh on the RV so you can certainly we have a, like a, like a ladder a ladder zip zip zone, you know, once it's covered. So that's that's certainly not a problem at all. So what makes uh what makes a a cover from Empire Covers better than another option. Why should I choose Empire Covers? Like I said, one thing that's really important to us is, you know, making sure something that it is really that it's going to last you and it's going to fit your your RV. All the different problems that that can arise if you don't have something that fits properly. So that's one of the one of the things we've really heavily invested in is making sure we, you know, we not only provide covers that have uh, the different durabilities or protection levels to cover the different scenarios you might run into, but we have a, a wide range of, you know, uh, fit, fitment for our covers. So you're not really getting some one size fits all, you know, bungee cord tarp you're really throwing over, you know, your, your RV. The whole, whole point in investing in something that we offer by buying one of our products is to protect what you've invested in, you know, spend a large amount of money in your RV. You wanna make sure that it's protected properly. That's why you're not throwing a tarp you know, and strapping it down over top of your RV that you buy a cover from us because you want it to, to fit, to stay in your RV and to actually protect it for, you know, those seasonality changes. Can you give me an idea? Uh, obviously it's going to range, but can you give me an idea of what a customer is looking at in terms of price? Sure. Two of our materials that I would really uh, point to as being um, ones that, you know, I, I are high are big sellers and something that people kind of go to is uh, our go-to products. We have our premier material, 
uh, which is in the you know 400 to you know 500 price point depending on the size of your your RV for example like a class C RV cover is about you know 440 dollars or give or take and that's actually um, marine grade polyester and it has cake seams for really that very tight waterproof protection so for those customers that are really living in a climate that's seeing a lot of snow or rain and they really want to make sure that you don't have any of these these you know these issues that I spoke of uh, that really can affect the you know you, you don't want to be taking the cover off and have any surprises underneath at the end of the season so for those that are really looking for that uh, premier level protection they would go with our premier material line and it also is very heavy duty so for long-term storage so this, this isn't just storing it for the winter maybe you are a summer you know summer you, you take your rv out for the summer and the rest of the year it's covered and protected you really want to make sure that when you come back to it or even for multiple years you want to come back to it and it's just the way you left it you would buy like our premier material and that actually has a three-year warranty on it uh, to make sure that it really lasts other than that we have our protector material which is a less expensive material line and it's in like the 230 dollar price point for a similar size cover that's at like 34 36 foot long cover that's much more lightweight and very easy to install uh and and really for those who are just looking to to get something to make sure that it's protected but don't necessarily you know have major climate issues or you know i mean it is uh, still a water resistant material and it is you you know uv protected so it's still a very high quality cover it's just it's not uh quite at the the higher premier level line that some customers don't necessarily need and i know you guys have an offer for our listeners uh that can help them out with the price a little bit tell us about it yeah we have an extra 15 percent off uh, promotional code uh, i'd like to give you guys today it's rv miles all one word so that actually applies to rvs and all products on the site so we offer car covers boat covers you know all, of course rv covers motorcycle covers bicycle covers you know there's many different in things that you might want to cover i mean as we talked about there's you're making an investment into uh the various things that you own like right now i'm actually in the process of restoring you know a paint job on something that, on a bicycle that i own that sat outside for a few years uh, from a family friend and it just got wrecked by the weather so if that had been covered you know i wouldn't be sitting here wet sanding it and getting it ready but like I said, RV miles. A lot of us travel with bicycles. You could get a bicycle cover from Empire Covers to have your bicycle sitting outside. A lot of us end up parking our, our trucks that we tow our trailers with under trees that are dropping lots of sap and stuff. You could pick up a cover and throw it over your, your truck while you're camping as well. So it's not just for RVs. Our covers are award-winning and all a variety of affordable price points. We have 100,000 reviews, over 100,000 reviews. And we actually offer free shipping from Kentucky to the lower 48 states. And we cover much more than just RVs. So cars, SUVs, trucks, vans, boats, jet skis, motorcycles, snowmobiles, and more. Look, a lot of people ask me this time of year whether they should cover their RVs or not. My answer is always... <laughs> Uh, only if you plan to do it right. And I think, you know, people should really seriously buy a real cover to cover their RV with. And I, I've, I've ran into people at campgrounds whose RVs are 20 years old and the paint job looks brand new. And uh, when you ask them why, it's because they cover their RV. So I think a, a cover is a great investment, especially if you're sitting your RV out in winter weather, uh, like most of us here in the Midwest do, to keep it from, you know, getting the snow in and the uh, and the freezing rain and the, the deep temperature changes that we've gone through in the last week from 80 degrees to snow to this dreary rainy weather that we've got going on right now. So check out empirecovers.com for a good cover. Colin Phillips, thanks for joining us on the podcast. Thanks, when it comes to RV travel, weather safety is a top priority, which is why the Highway Weather app provides weather forecasts for road trips along every point of your route, adjusted to your time of travel. You can compare forecasts, get recommendations for the best time to head out, get severe weather alerts, add rest stops to long trips, and more. Did we mention all of that's included free in the app? For subscribers, there's a hands-free background feature to automatically alert you to upcoming bad weather. 
To download the app, visit highwayweather.io today or look for it in your iOS or Android app store. Each week lately, we've been asking you to do one thing to help support the RV Miles community, something that is free and easy to do if you're so inclined to help us out. This week, what would we like you to do, Abby? This week, we would love it if you would go over to Instagram and join us on our personal travel page, Our Wandering Family. We are only 250 subscribers away from cracking a huge milestone over there, so it would be awesome if you could help us make that happen. All you have to do is go to Instagram.com slash Our Wandering Family, or just open up the Instagram app because really, that's about the only way to use Instagram and just search Our Wandering Family. We would love to follow you back as well. Our Wandering Family is Jason and I's personal travel journal. That's where we talk a little bit more about the personal family travel aspect of what we do. Whereas RV Miles on Instagram is really starting to focus on you guys and what it's like for you out on the road. So we hope you will come over to Our Wandering Family over on Instagram, help us kick up that new milestone and then we can start to connect with you over there as well as always thank you so much for listening to this podcast or watching us on youtube and then taking that extra step to support rv miles it really does mean the world to us so thank you all right, it's time to check the level of our tanks. Abby, what is in your black tank this week? So my black tank this week goes to lack of communication when it comes to shutting off water at campgrounds. So we are now at our second campground where we have been surprised by water shut off. I completely understand the need to shut off the water. This is not a black tank towards shutting off campground water. It's the lack of communication. So here we had someone at the park show up at our door on Monday, the coldest day, rainy, miserable, and say, hey, here pretty soon, like in the next five minutes, we're shutting the water off for the season. So we were not prepared. We were hooked up to the water and so we were doing all the things we needed to do and that was fine. In the end, they ended up needing to reverse it because they had people in the campground who could not fill up a tank and who could not be without water. So And this is after, you know, making the reservation, asking when the water is going to be shut yes. off, not and and you know, expecting it to be on. But they had one day here where it was going to dip somewhere around freezing and then now look we're back up into 60 degrees and we're not getting anywhere near freezing at night. My issue is that it's not being communicated and so we had someone come to the door and communicated a few minutes before they wanted to do it and then shortly after I got an email <laughs> that said it's that time of year again time for us to shut off the water and I thought if you know it's that time of year again why aren't you putting this information on your website? You know, at least over at Angostura, they had said, there's the possibility, give us a call. But, you know, then there was that headache. Then they don't ever answer the phone. So. <laughs> yeah, then there was no one there to answer the phone. Here, there was absolutely no communication whatsoever. So then that prompted me to call the next campground we're going to and make sure. And what's funny, when I asked him, he kind of laughed like that was almost a silly question that I was asking. And he's like, well, no, we never get cold enough to have to shut off the water. It's only 100 miles from here. <laughs> and I said, that's awesome. You know, I just wanted to double check because we just got a surprise knock on the door that the water was being shut off here. And They're both Army Corps of Engineer yeah. campgrounds managed by un, under the same umbrella I in know. this re same region. Well, as we're learning <laughs> a little bit with the National Park Service and with our federal lands, uh, there's a lot of loopholes we don't quite know about. And we're learning about them and we're figuring it out. But it would be just really nice if we could have a little bit more communication about water shut off. So that is my black tank. All right, what's your fresh tank? Oh, my fresh tank is this awesome pre-made cocktail that I found at Trader Joe's. I am not one for pre-made cocktails. I don't really care for like pre-made margaritas and you know, daiquiris and like the ones in the cans. Like I really don't like the seltzery spritzery Yeah, drinks. but this is actually a, an actual drink, not like a this is a seltzer drink that's made to well, taste like another drink. No, but I'm talking about how, you know, you buy 
pre-made margarita and it's already got like the alcohol yeah. in it. Like I always feel like those taste really fake and artificial to okay. me. You know, that's kind of the line I'm going. So when I was at Trader Joe's last week, I just, I didn't want to have to hassle with buying multiple bottles of things. I happened to notice this brand called La Vida Bonita and it's a margarita mixed with agave wine. And as you know, we've laughed in the past about our experience in New Mexico where we wanted a margarita and they didn't have a liquor license. So they were like, here's a margarita with wine. So I thought, well, this can't be really good, but I'm kind of desperate and it's $14 and I'm just gonna go ahead and get it because I need to have some kind of cocktail for the week that's coming. So I bought it. It is so good. I, I eat all of my words about pre-made like margarita mixes with alcohol in them. I eat them all. I, I'm contemplating tomorrow before we leave here, just driving back to Trader Joe's, which is a half an hour away just to buy another bottle because we're almost out of this. <laughs> so I'm recommending it. If you have a Trader Joe's anywhere near you or you see this brand, it's called La Vida Bonita. And we just got the regular margarita mix. It's got some agave wine. It's gluten-free. Uh, it was delicious. It is delicious. I'm going to finish the bottle when we're done recording. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jay, what is in your black tank this week? Uh, my black tank is hate for newbie campers. Ooh. You know, we've been, we've been really working hard, um, putting a lot of YouTube videos out lately. And one of the seven circles of hell, I'm, I'm certain, <laughs> is the YouTube comment section. Uh, and it is a great place for us to interact with people who watch our videos and we love it. Uh, but then there are people that are just terrible and mean they and nasty. They use mean words over on YouTube. Oh. Like, I mean, would you kiss your loved one with that mouth? I, it's awful. Uh, anyway, I did a video the other day on all of the new campers. We talked about this on, on the podcast last week. Um, on all the new campers and whether or not they'll be coming back next year. And a lot of the comments are about how terrible all the new people are, how they're trashing our lands, how they're trashing campgrounds, how people aren't going, they're not gonna go back to campgrounds because they don't wanna be with these new people. You know what, I gotta tell you, that's not the new people. Yeah. It's the same, I mean, the, the people have been doing this forever. It's just, there's more people. The this? people that are were, are willing to do that are the people that are willing to do that, whether they're a new camper or not. This complaint is a tale as old as time. Yeah. You could just go back through the National Park Service's Facebook page over the years and see how many posts they have put out about being responsible to your public lands. Look, Leave No Trace didn't just show up this year. No. Okay, no. Leave No Trace has been around for a while, and it was not because all of these new RV buyers. Yeah, and I think, you know, uh, there there's a lot of well, people don't know, you know, all the unwritten rules, like don't walk through someone's campsite and stuff like that. Yeah, they'll learn it if they don't know it, because that stuff will annoy them as well as they <laughs> continue to yeah. camp. Um, but well, let's try to, you know, let's try to relax a bit and, and enjoy them and help them out and not help them out by saying, hey, no, you really shouldn't walk through my campsite. You're the worst. I mean, you could say it in a nice way. <laughs> uh, but, you know, let's let's give them a break and let's hope. I, I think it's a positive that more people are camping. And so many people I'm finding out now thinking it is a huge, huge negative. And uh, I just I can't get behind that. No, it's I mean... A, it's not for me because I got in the club early enough and nobody else should be able to do it. It feels a little bit like, get off my lawn, but like, get off my campsite. Okay, what is your fresh tank this week? Uh, friend of the show, Chuck Woodbury, over at rvtravel.com. Uh, if you haven't gone back and listened to the episode where he joined us on the podcast, it was it's one of our most downloaded episodes. Uh, he really shared a, a, an eye-opening view of the RV industry. Chuck's written a book called The ABCs of RVing for anybody interested in this lifestyle and uh, really going through all the details of what you need to know and um, what you should be doing and not doing and what you need to buy and all that sort of stuff. And, you know, as many people are RVing out there, there aren't a lot of good books on that topic. So I think you should really go check it out. We'll put a link to it in the show notes. 
there's a good podcast on that subject. Well, but there's not. some people like books and <laughs> some people have told us over and over to write a book and they have, I can't even wrap my brain around that. So I'm glad that <laughs> Chuck went and did it because I can't wrap my head around that. And I have to say and Chuck, Chuck's, Chuck's experience, yeah. going, you know, like 30 Ooh. some years of experience RVing. OG. We'll take it over our. Yeah. Every time he emails us, I think it says Chuck Woolery. And then I'm like, what Chuck Woolery? I'm sure he never gets that. Sorry, I'm sure. Chuck. I know that that's probably a new observation <laughs> for Chuck. <laughs> but I'm just saying, I always have a moment where I'm like two and two. What's he doing emailing us? <laughs> and if you have, if you do have a moment, go check out rvtravel.com. It's a great website full of a, a wealth of information. Archive. It's the archive oh, of websites. All right, that's it for this episode of the RV Miles podcast. Let's wrap it up with the brain teaser. That goes like this. Which noun from group B belongs in group A and why? Group A, man, foot, child, tooth, mouse. Group B, girl, hand, adult, toe, goose. One of the words in group B belongs in group A, why? We'll have the answer to that and a whole lot more on next week's episode of the RV Miles podcast. Yes, we will. And hey, if you are enjoying the show, we would appreciate a five-star review wherever you are listening to podcasts, but particularly over on Apple Podcasts. Your five-star review is helping to put RV Miles in front of a whole new batch of listeners, and that is amazing. If you haven't come over and joined the RV Miles Facebook group, now is the time to do it. It is such a fantastic group of individuals who are asking questions daily, sharing answers daily, and being really really, really encouraging, which is nice to see in these times, encouraging people, encouraging others. And we don't even mind if you are a new RVer. If you have any questions for Jason and I, hey, go over to YouTube and leave them in the comments section of this video. You know, we put the podcast out on all of our podcast apps, but we also put it out over on YouTube. So if you've got a question about this episode, just go on over there and leave it. We would love to talk to you. And of course, you can find us all across social media or at editor at rvmiles.com. But until next week, thank you so much for listening. Stay safe, wear your mask, and keep logging those RV miles. Bye, everybody. <laughs> you! week to cover or not cover that is the question i was actually going to say that as hamlet once asked to cover or not cover that is the question emphasis on that that is the question <laughs> that is the question that is the question <laughs> oh god we're recording aren't we yes we are that's that probably, means I'm going to use this. That's probably going to find its way onto the show. All right. I'm going to push you off into this water. <laughs> That'd be a great way to end it if I just shoved you off and you went pew. All right. Let's do this.